Welcome back. Section 9, Geologic Time. I believe this is the last section. Um, so remember that kind of the three big themes for historical geology is that the Earth changes, life changes, and this happens over a long period of time. So geologic time. Again, uh, we'll go over geologic time, I think, in Unit 4. That will be we'll kind of expand this whole idea of geologic time and focus just on that for unit four, I believe. Anywho, uh, from human perspective, right, seconds, hours, days, years, we, we understand this, right? From a human perspective, this is what we understand. Even ancient human history, looking back hundreds of years or thousands of years, we can grasp that. Geologic history we our brains can't wrap our our we can't wrap our brains around that it's so much time you know it we can't even begin to to imagine what that is when we're talking about even millions of years let alone hundreds of millions or billions of years most people's idea of a long time ago was dinosaurs they're in popular culture so in some, something like what happened like millions or billions of years ago someone's going to say oh, dinosaurs yeah that's back there but actually it's not all that far back there in fact dinosaurs are relatively new as far as earth goes dinosaurs are really more close to us than a lot of other things so our perception of geologic time we just don't have it our brains don't have that capacity for example let me just show you using money all right, let me just show you kind of an example using money, how, how much of how big some of these numbers are. All right. So that small little stack of a hundreds, that's ten thousand dollars. So a hundred hundreds. So that's a, a stack of a hundred, one hundred dollar bill has ten thousand dollars. Which, you know, in our brains, oh man, ten thousand dollars is a lot. Then you look at it and you're like, oh, that's not a lot. So how much do you think this next stack is? That's a million dollars. That's a million dollars. So a uh, hundred stacks of hundred like this. So that's a million dollars. So when someone says they have a million dollars, they're like, wait, that's it? That's all a million dollars is? Wait, that's it. So what I'm saying is like a million years ago, 50 million years ago when the dinosaurs were around, it's not really a lot as far as Earth is concerned. Because this big, all of this, that's a billion. That's a billion dollars. So money-wise, it's just kind of funny. This is the difference between a billionaire and a millionaire. It is a big difference, right? When an athlete is a millionaire, but then we have these, you know, CEO billionaires, that's a big difference. Same thing with time, right? <clears throat> you know, when we think in old dinosaurs that's only millions of years old that's you know maybe 50 stacks of this that's that's really not all that much when we're talking about the age of the earth we're talking 4.54 billion that's four and a half more of the all of these pallets so that's 45 more or well, i guess 35 more pallets uh, of stacks like this so to, and I'm just using money as a reference here. So time, it's this thing, like, if we don't see it, we, it's hard to imagine. There's been so much time of Earth, and the universe is even older than that. So the way uh, we figured all of this out is the results uh, from the work of many 19th century uh, geologists who gathered information from numerous rock exposures, rocks that are exposed, and kind of constructed a sequential and chronological order of geologic time based on uh, mostly changing an Earth's biota, bi biologic things, looking at fossils and other conditions we can see in, in rocks through time. And so we came up with something called the geologic time scale, putting kind of Earth's time on a scale reference that's tied to geology and biology. Ages in this geologic time scale subsequently were assigned to this time scale by using a scientific approach, radiometric dating techniques, and we'll talk more about that at a, at a later time. But this is the geologic time scale, and, and you'll see this very often. Different scales look a little bit different. Um, they get updated with new information. 
again, science changes with new information, we might change. Um, so for, uh, for example, instead of uh, this Ordovician geologic period starting at 488 million years ago, maybe it's 487 million years ago, we change it with new information or, you know, whatever it may be. So even this changes a little bit, different geologic timescales look different, but it's broken up into kind of four big chunks. Eons are the largest chunk. We have the Precambrian and we have the Phanerozoic Eon. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but then it, so it, these are in millions of years ago. So geologic time starts when the Earth started. It's kind of rounded here to 4,000, uh, 4, 4,600 million, which is 4.6 billion. Again, even though the Earth is about 4.54 billion. So again, different scales might be a little bit different. So starting from the, the beginning of Earth in the Precambrian Eon, sometimes it's broken up into the Archean and Proterozoic, and that's actually uh, uh, divided by um, when life first evolved, uh, became a thing on Earth, which is about 2.5 billion years ago. So there was almost 2 billion years where there really wasn't anything life, life-wise on Earth. And then 2.5 billion years ago, we get Proterozoic, very simple life. And then from there, around 542 million years ago, that marks the beginning of the Phanerozoic Eon, the beginning of the Paleozoic Era. The Phanerozoic Eon is broken up into different eras. Paleozoic, I think, is early time. Mesozoic means middle time. And Cenozoic means late time. Again, we'll go over in Unit 4 more on this. I could be wrong. But then those eras are broken up into smaller chunks called geologic periods. This is often what you will hear me refer to geologic time-wise. You'll hear about the Jurassic period, Jurassic Park, Jurassic period. This is when the dinosaurs were alive from about 251 million years ago to about 66 million years ago. Again, just not all that long. Not, not all that long ago. <clears throat> um, so... The reason for this change from the Precambrian to now the Phanerozoic, which is the beginning of the Paleozoic, which is marked by the beginning of the Cambrian, Precambrian, before the Cambrian, and then now the Cambrian, is that there is this rapid explosion of life. All of a sudden, all these things began to evolve on Earth. And so all of these different divisions and periods mark different evolutionary stages of biota on, on Earth. So we have, just for word reference because you'll hear me saying it again uh, we have the cambrian the ordovician the silurian the devonian the mississippian and the pennsylvanian which in some maps in some countries is just combined to the carboniferous uh, and the permian those are all in the paleozoic era then in the mesozoic era we have the triassic jurassic and the cretaceous and at the end of the cretaceous which marks the the mark between the cretaceous and the paleogene or the mesozoic and the cenozoic this is where the dinosaurs died out Rise of the reptiles, death of them. Well, not death of all reptiles, but this is kind of a, a major um, point, a change in biota. So a lot of these differentiations between periods and eras and, and epochs I'll talk about here in a second is when new life arose or when, when a lot of life went extinct. So dinosaurs went extinct here. So that marks the end of the Mesozoic. Then we get into the Cenozoic, which is uh, divided into the Paleogene and the Neogene period. And the Neogene is sometimes referred to as the Quaternary. Depends on what map, what thing you're looking at. And then you can further divide periods up into smaller chunks called epochs, mostly for the more recent stuff, more fossil evidence, more better preserved fossil evidence because it's not as old. And so some of these epochs are the Paleocene, the Eocene, the, the Oligocene, the Miocene, the Pliocene, the Pleistocene, and recent geologic history is sometimes referred to as the Holocene. So that's the geologic time scale. Um, the, the, the thing that keeps us grounded in geology is this idea called uniformitarianism, which is a cornerstone of geology. It's not necessarily a theory per se, but it's the understanding and it's, it's, it's the, the idea that geology, the premise of geology is that it's based on the present day processes have operated throughout geologic time. Earthquakes and volcanoes happen now, therefore they happened in the past. Plate tectonics is moving things around now, 
It's moved around in the past and vice versa. This happened in the past. This will, that means this happens in the present, which will happen in the future. The physical and chemical laws of nature have remained the same through time. Physics has been physics forever. That's the way it is. All right. Chemistry is chemistry. That's the uh, protons, neutrons, and electrons. It is what it is, right? And in geology, uniformitarianism, the processes that happen now also happened in the past. Sometimes that's referred to uh, by this phrase, the, the present is the key to the past, right? I can't go back in time 400 million years and see how these particular things were living or how these rocks form. But I can look at them now. I can study them now, and that helps me infer what happens in what happened in the past. The present is the key to the past. So to, again, to interpret geologic evidence uh, events from evidence preserved in rocks, we must first understand present day processes and the results, and that those same things happen in the past. Now, rates and intensities of geologic processes can change. Th those have changed through time. Maybe there was more earthquakes, less earthquakes, more volcanoes, less volcanoes. Plates were moving around faster, plates were moving around slower. So rates and intensities may have changed, but those processes have always been ongoing so how do all, all of this benefit us you know kind of to wrap things up uh you know the survival of the human species depends on understanding how earth and its systems work and interact this is the only place we have to live we're not going to go anywhere else by studying what happened in the past at a global scale we can then determine kind of the future of of our systems and so we live geology. Right? Our standard of living directly depends on our consumption of natural resources. Everything that we have only comes from two places. It's either grown or mined out of the earth. That's it. That's where stuff comes from. So our lives depend on earth. And these resources, especially the ones that we mined under the ground, those formed millions and billions of years ago. So having an understanding of geologic time and the processes are important. So it also kind of helps us to understand how fast we consume natural resources, which is a little too fast in modern days, right? If things can't replenish, if we're mining out this stuff faster and faster, eventually the stuff is going to go away. That's it. All right. One more thing I wanted to show you. Um, let me jump over to, yes. So now that you've watched all the lecture videos, again, maybe you took notes, even though I mentioned not to. You've, you have the super secret code, remember, 3333, three, three, three. Yeah, I've changed it. Um, you put that in, you can answer this question. And there's only one thing I want you to answer, answer and it's this. You know, I'm just going to highlight some things here, but, you know, make sure you're reading through. It's going to be the same for every unit. Imagine you're sitting down to dinner with family, friends, children, enemies, whoever. And they ask, hey, what did you, what did you learn in your geology lecture that you just watched? Whatever would come out of your mouth, that's what I want. The words that you would use, that's what I want. All right. You're going to summarize and paraphrase. You're not going to go every sing over every single detail because imagine that other person. They'd get bored. If you went on and on and on and on with all these science details, they've never taken a geology class. They don't know. So what your goal is to kind of summarize and paraphrase some of the things you found interesting or important in a way that someone you're sitting down at dinner with can kind of understand what you're talking about, even though they may have never, ever taken a geology class and know anything about it. All right. So requirement is one or two par traditional paragraphs, no more, no less. If it's one paragraph, dynamite. Two paragraphs, great. Three paragraphs, too much. Paraphrase in your own words what you thought was interesting or important. Discuss a minimum of two or three different topics, you know, and go from there. Be specific. Give details on what you learned. All right. Don't just list out things. Don't just be like, I, I learned about plate tectonic theory and it, this is the definition. I learned about evolution and this is the definition, blah, blah, blah. No. Give some details. Tell me why it was interesting or important. Again, imagine yourself having a conversation. Make sure everything is scientifically accurate and you've done some spelling and grammar check. Best way to do that, type it up in like a Word document or a Google document, uh, do a spelling and grammar check, copy and paste it in, make sure everything's good to go. All right. So make sure you're reading over the instructions There's a little bit more there. But again, you're taking complex information and paraphrasing it in a way that anyone can understand. This is an important skill to have. 
This is what I want you to focus on. All right, don't make it sound all sciencey for science sake. Think of it as a normal conversation. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. But if not, until next time.